Hello and welcome once again. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create and refine custom actions in Photoshop. Now an action is a recorded sequence of events that can be applied automatically to an image file. and This is very similar to a macro in Microsoft Word. Once recorded the action can be applied to different files at different times or indeed to a collection of files as a batch process. Using Photoshop Actions pretty much any command or process can be recorded and stored but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to be creating an action to add a border to an image and this is something that I like to do when making prints for a portfolio. The idea is to create a file which fits the dimensions of a chosen print size but incorporates a border, a white border of a specific width and thus the print can be sleeved directly and placed into a print box negating the necessity for me to mount it. So to start I need to go over to the Actions panel, we should find it here, or if it's not currently visible go to Windows Actions. Then what I'm going to do is make a new action set by clicking here at the bottom of the Actions panel. and I'm going to give this a name, My Actions, to keep it separate from the default actions already provided by Adobe. Next I'm going to create a new action and I'm going to call this action 16 by 12 border because I'm looking to make some prints to fit in a 16 by 12 inch print box. As you can see this will be recorded within my new action set and I could assign a function key to run the action maybe along with shift or command but this sometimes causes conflicts with existing keystrokes and in this case I'm not going to bother. So once I hit record, everything that I do from this point on will be recorded as the new action. First I'm going to turn the background into a layer by double clicking here in the layers panel. OK. And then I'm going to go to image, image size. And working in inches and with resample unchecked, I'm going to set the height value to 9 as this is the image size that I have worked out will fit my picture nicely on a 12-16 piece of paper with the amount of border that I want. OK, then I'm going to image canvas size and once again working in inches I'm going to set the overall canvas to 16 inches wide by 12 inches high and this will add some blank space to the file around my picture. Now I suggest that when framing an image with a mount or a border it's always a good idea to have a slightly larger border at the bottom of the image than at the top. Even borders tend to make the image look a bit top heavy. So I'm going to nudge the image up the canvas using the arrow key on the keyboard. You need to have the move tool selected to do this. So I'm going to apply 10 nudges. There we go. Finally I'm going to flatten the image down and stop the recording. And here we can see that I've created my new action. And if we were to go through this action we can see the individual stages. We set the background to a layer, we set the image size, we increase the canvas size, and then a bit of nudging before flattening the whole thing down. So having recorded this action we can now apply it to another image. Here's another image. Over to the Actions panel and select 16 by 12 border. Scroll down here and press play. Photoshop runs through each of the recorded stages and voila! I have my image with my border ready to go. All I need to do is save that out as a copy and send it to the lab for printing. It's also possible to run an action in part and to demonstrate this I'm going to revert the image back to when I first opened it using the history panel and I'm going to run the same action the 16 by 12 border but this time I'm going to uncheck the final flatten image stage. So what I can choose to do is to run some stages of the action but omit others and so when I press play now Photoshop does everything except flatten the image. And I've done this for a reason, as what I want to do now is to add an extra stage to the action. I'm going to select the last stage before flattening, 
and I'm going to press the record button. I'm then going to go over to my layers panel and double click in the blank area of the layer in order to create a layer style. I'm going to add a stroke. Here it is. And the stroke is going to be inside. I'm going to set the opacity to 100% and I'm going to make the stroke 5 pixels wide. I'm also going to stick with the default colour of black. And then I'm going to stop the recording. So what I've done is added an extra stage to the action that adds a black key line to the image. Once again, I'm going to revert the image and then switch on the flatten image stage of the action and then run the action again to create my finished image with a border and a key line. So I have a choice here. I can either add the border with the key line or if I choose to uncheck the set layer style stage I can have a border without the key line. Both options are available from the same action. Excellent. Now, of course, this action is only appropriate for landscape images of a certain aspect ratio being printed to 16 by 12. What if we wanted to print to a different paper size, for example? Let's revert this picture again, and this time I'm going to create a second action for a 10 by 8 inch print. What I'm going to do is duplicate my first action by dragging it onto the new action icon and this will create a copy of the action. I'm going to rename it by double clicking on it. 10 by 8 border. The first stage is the same but the image size should be different. I'm going to double click here and this time I'm going to change the width to 7.5 inches. Then I'm going to edit the canvas size and set it to 10 by 8 inches. And this is the result. So if I restore this image and if I run this action I will have a 12 by 16 inch print or I could run this action with or without the layer style stage. I'm going to run with and there I have my 10 by 8 inch print with a key line around the image. Now it might be that you want to share your action, put it onto another machine perhaps, or share it with another user. In Photoshop Creative Cloud you can't export an individual action, but you can export an action set. And this is why I made a new set at the beginning of this tutorial. So in the Actions panel, select the set to be exported, and then in the Panel Zone Flyout menu here, choose Save Actions. We can then rename the action set and save it somewhere where we can find it easily. You can then distribute this file through the usual channels, by email, on a USB stick, however. To import an action, simply open the same panel menu and go to Load Actions. Navigate to the desired actions file and click open. Sometimes we have a large number of images that need to be processed by a particular action. For example, I might have a complete set of pictures that I wish to add borders to. Now rather than opening each image in turn, applying the actions and then saving individually, Photoshop offers an option to batch process and to further automate the workflow. Before I can do this, I need to add an extra stage to the action. So I'm going to select the last stage of my existing action and then click Record. Next I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And choose a quality value of 12 and then stop the recording. So what I've done here is added a stage to the action which saves the file after the action has been run. 
The way we saved it is irrelevant, as we'll soon see. But the problem we have now is that the save option is only available to the 10x8 border action here. What I can do though is add the same save option to the 16x12 border action, but I don't have to re-record it. All I need to do is hold down the Alt key on a Mac or the Option key on a PC and drag the required stage up here to duplicate it. Now I have the same save stage in both of these actions. OK, now it's time to apply my action to a new batch of images. I'm going to go to File, Automate, Batch. And here I can choose which action to run. And I'm going to choose a folder of images to process. Next, I'm going to choose a destination folder. I'm going to make a new folder, name it. OK. Now, it's very important that you make sure that override action save as commands is checked. This is rather confusing terminology, but if left unchecked, the action may well stall at the save stage. Finally, I'm going to rename my files. Give them a three digit number and a lowercase extension, as is my preference. So when I press OK, Photoshop takes each image from the source folder, opens it, runs the action and saves a copy to the destination folder. And if we have a look at the destination folder, here we see the finished images coming in. In this case, size to fit on a 10 by 8 inch piece of paper with a lovely border and a black key line. So to recap, actions are a sequence of commands and edits that can be recorded and recalled to automate common Photoshop tasks. And with a little bit of planning, you should be able to create a series of useful custom actions that will simplify and speed up your workflow. For example, you might choose to create actions to perform techniques featured in some of my other Photoshop tutorials, such as high pass sharpening or dodging and burning. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please share, click on the like button and subscribe to be notified of the next tutorial from duncanshepherd.co.uk.